really does not feel the need for God. Sin brought fear. Disobedience brought fear. How do we get out of that fear? Obedience to God. The person who does not feel a need for prayer. Good evening, everyone. We are so grateful to God for such an opportunity and a privilege like this. We begin this program with the health tidbits that we need to know before the main speaker comes to present. And that we're looking at freedom from fear. And since we all fear diseases and sicknesses and a lot of challenges, we need to definitely look at aspects of health that will really help us to overcome. And so we look at health and wealth that will give us freedom. And uh, if you have good health, that is where you'll be able to create the wealth that you need, and then the wealth that you need will give you the freedom that you also have. And so wealth, wealth and health, when you take the English spelling, it's only the W and the H that changes. And uh, with that, it helps you to know that if you can attain freedom, then you need both. And if you need both, then we need to look at why it is important for health to produce the wealth that we need. The first wealth is health. That is what Ralph Waldo Emerson said some time ago. And uh, Herophilos also says something that says that when health is absent, health is useless. When health is absent, wealth is useless. The greatest wealth is then your health. And so you need to preserve and keep it very, very well. And your health is in your own, is your true wealth. And so you don't need to neglect uh, that. So you need to work on your health so it helps you to stay in uh, health. All right. And so I think uh, we had a little technical uh, challenge that I wanted to be resolved. And so uh, we get it done here. And uh, as I was saying, if you look at health, and so we see that when we do neglect our health by engaging in unhealthy lifestyle practices and behaviors, it definitely will have an impact and influence in our lives. And we need to adopt to preventive care that will save us much money because if we see how skyrocketing the health bills that we are seeing these days, it tells you that you definitely need to work on your health because with that, you would be able to save a lot for yourself. And medical bills are becoming very much expensive and if you are a worker, you indeed need to be in health because if you are not in health, you would not be able to work well, to be productive and to live longer on this uh, and, and so you need to invest in your health because investing in your health is something that will pay so much for you. You may spend money on uh, so many things in your life, but this is an investment that could pay dividends for you down the road if you indeed want to be in, good, uh, uh, in prosperity and in wealth. And so health and wealth, taking good care of your health would be challenging but it is very, very important that you engage yourself in that. It may be difficult to make a, uh, it a priority, especially when you have a busy schedule for your life and for yourself. But start by developing small changes every day and you will be adding up to the blessings that you need. So what is health? Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. That is what the WHO in 1948 uh, established as the true definition of what health indeed is. But with this definition, it came to a point where they decided that they need to review this. So in 1998, some proposals came up and they added an aspect to that. And that aspect is that health is a dynamic state of complete physical, mental, spiritual, and social well-being, 
and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And so for this reason, it tells you that you cannot be wealthy and healthy without the spiritual component of health. Even though it was not voted fully into action, but it is still recognized that it is an aspect and very, very important that we should not neglect. And so if we fear uh, diseases and if we fear uh, to be in debt and to be, to be in poverty, then we definitely need to work on our health because health will contribute to that. And spirituality is also a component of the health that we need. And so medical care versus uh, health care. It is realized that people mostly talk about interchange, medical care and health care, thinking that they are the same. No, but they are not the same in the sense that if you take medical care, the focus is on palliative and the curative aspect of your health. And so you cannot entrust your own health into the hands of another person, and that takes about 30%. But when you take health, which is the health care, you need to care for your health, and nobody can do that for you. So health is a personal responsibility that must be exercised within the limits of genetic endowment, and 70% of our well-being is determined by lifestyle factors. And health is a function of how people take their own responsibility for their own actions or the actions that they engage themselves in. And so good health will definitely lead to a better quality of life. So if you want a better quality of life, what you need to resort to would be to um, chase after good health, and that will help you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And so I want to ask this question, that if we want to enjoy true health, that will create the world for us to have our freedom. Is that going to happen by chance, or it is going to happen because it is designed, and we need to follow those designs so we can have it done that way? And so we are going to look at two aspects of that. Uh, those who hold health from the point of view that it is a design, and then others who hold the perspective that health is not by design, but it is chance. So anything that happens goes. So I take the first one by reading from the Bible that says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And so he tells us that this group of people who believe that health is not by chance, but by design, they have a God who is behind that design. And that God created them in his own image. And if he created them in his own image, then it means that he would have a responsibility for them. And that responsibility, we will look at that. And then the other aspect, the second worldview of health is that ah, health is just by chance. You are just here by chance, and anything that happens to you or anything that happens is by chance. So we practice it that way because they're saying that man evolved from the apes family about two million years ago. And so if that is the case, then it tells you that this worldview would be looking at it from the point of view that a time is coming where we will lose our health and it is something that we should, it's imperative that we should leave, lose it. And so nothing will be done about it. So it is leading to premature deaths and disabilities that people are suffering nowadays. So this is how it, look, it goes like. And that when we have the evolutionary mindset, the states that uh, there is no God, no plan for our lives, our health, and our wellness, and our well-being, then the result will be a carefree life that will lead to untimely deaths as we are seeing. So if you look at life these days, you look at the obituary posters and home calls and the others, and you realize that people's lives are being shortened. When people are supposed to be in their productive ages, that is when they are suffering from uh, diseases and sicknesses and a lot of things that will be bothering them in their lives. So we ask ourselves that, is it happening in this way because it is by chance? So let's look at what the data has from the WHO. He says that the leading causes of death globally, this is a current one that's uh, for 2019, the leading causes of death globally are a global, at, at the global level, we have seven out of the 10 leading causes of death in 2019 to be non-communicable diseases. And non-communicable diseases are diseases that do not transmit from one person to another. But they are sicknesses or diseases that our lifestyle bring upon us. And uh, for the global burden of diseases, these are the leading causes of death. And the number one is ischemic heart diseases. The number two is stroke. And we also have uh, chronic uh, 
pulmonary or structural diseases that are affecting us and a lot of others. The world's biggest killer is ischemic heart disease. And that claimed 16% of the world's total death. That is about 8.9 million deaths in 2019 alone. And so it tells us that we have a very uh, long way to go. Second and third, we have stroke and chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. That is 11% of the total deaths that occurred in 2019 and 6% uh, uh, respectively. And the fourth uh, is the lower respiratory infections, which claimed about 2.6 million deaths in the world. And the number five on the list happened to be neonatal conditions. That is uh, children who are born and are not able to cross but die along the way. Two million newborns or neonates died in 2019. The number six is trachea, bronchus, and lung cancers. Deaths that rose from 1.2 million to 1.8 within a span of just some few years. And so this tells me and tells you that we need to take charge of our health. If we indeed want to be, uh, to enjoy our wealth in life, then we need to take charge. Number seven is Alzheimer's disease, and that is the form of dementia and the other forms of dementia globally, 65% deaths occurred in women. So if you are a woman, you need to be very careful and take charge in that particular area. The eighth, eighth one is diarrheal diseases. That is 2.6 million in 2000, and it lowered, it came down to 1.5 million in 2019, even though it was lowered, but it's still on a rise. And the ninth is diabetes. Diabetes claimed 70%. Uh, it has increased by 70% since 2000. And the largest rise is in males. So if you are a male here, you need to know that if you don't take charge of your health very well, you will end up having that. Number 10, which is kidney disease, rose from the 13th position to the number 10th position. And that claimed about 803,000 in 2000. But in 2019, it claimed about 1.3 million deaths worldwide. And so the leading causes of death uh, in low-income countries, we see that to also be uh, non-communicable uh, diseases, infectious diseases, diseases that are transmitted from one person to the other. But I want to concentrate a little on the lower middle-income countries since Ghana falls within this category. And we realize that about five of the deaths, uh, uh, five of the diseases that afflict people in low middle income countries are non-communicable disease, making us suffer the double burden of disease. So if you are a Ghanaian, then you need to take charge of your health because the WHO says heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and chronic respiratory disease are the biggest cause of premature mortality worldwide, with 82% of these deaths now occurring in lower and middle income countries that includes Ghana. And so we need to look at that carefully. These diseases are slow motion disaster as they take some years, if not decades, to develop and to kill. Ghana, for example, has a population of about 30, point, 30 million and 15% uh, deaths that occurred. Uh, we had about 45% of non-communicable diseases that claimed lives of the total deaths that occurred in 2019 and 86,300 total non-communicable disease deaths. That is 22% probability that if you are a Ghanaian, you are going to die from this condition is very, very high in this particular regard. So the fact that these diseases could be prevented. So in 2019, communicable diseases were responsible for nearly half uh, of the deaths that occurred in low and middle income countries. But when you come to the African region, it took about 52.9%, telling us that we have a great work that we need to do. And the underlying causes are that two thirds of non-communicable diseases uh, occurred because of tobacco use, harmful use of alcohol, unhealthy eating, and physical inactivity. So we would be spending time uh, this week to look at the things that we can do to overcome this burden of disease, both the, especially on the non-communicable disease aspect, because the WHO says that the marketing of unhealthy products like cigars, alcohol, sugar-filled beverages, and foods that are high or rich in fat, sugar, and salt is very powerful and persuasive, and we need to counter that if we want it to be done. So I want to conclude by saying that you spend your time, this is said by somebody, to make a dime, and then you lose your health to make your wealth. But 
at the end of it all, it is so funny because you leave back all your money. So whilst we are chasing after wealth, whilst we are chasing after money, let us know that our health is so very much important and we need to chase after that instead of anything else. So the greatest wealth is your health. Spending money on your health is one of the best investments that you can make for your life. And so tomorrow, God willing, we will look at those who claim that health is by chance, and then you would be able to compare to know whether you are on the path of those who are saying health is by design or it is by chance. So we look at those for the design aspect, and that will really help us. And I wish uh, we all stay glued and stay tuned together so that we would be able to go through the program successfully. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord help you as you continue to stay in tune to the glory of his name whilst we prepare to be wealthy in Jesus name amen I did realize that I was drifting away to the faithful moment when you touched my heart you made me see that I was losing my way and you won me enough but I did not hear I didn't realize that I Drifting away to the faithful moment when you touched my heart. You made me see that I was losing my way, and you won me enough, but I did not hear. Dear Lord, broken on my knees as I am, and reaper the sword. Your revival is all I need. Regrets are pulling me away, and know the child in what I am. Your cutie heart is pulling me down, but your revival is all. Impossible. What can't you do? 
Gentlemen, you are welcome to Freedom from Fear Bible Lecture Series. We are coming your way from Medina Central Seventh Day Adventist Church. One of you just heard from the ministers from Abekan Seventh Day Adventist Church. On behalf of the leadership of the Seventh Day Adventist Church in the Southern Ghana Union Conference and the Northern Ghana Union Conference, I want to welcome all of you to this Bible Lecture Series. I want you to know that the Lord's presence is with you. And as you whisper a prayer unto the Lord, the Lord is ready to hear our cry. The Lord is ready to speak to us. We shall fall in our own kwaba. Yes, we shall go on say. We shall be in our dom. Oh my, and yes, we shall be in our own. Yes, so many more. So I want to thank the ministers so much for the song they gave unto us. Now at this time, I want you to understand that there are pastors present here ready to pray with us ready to receive our prayer request, ready to lead us in prayer, and ready to tell God that whatever prayers we have, the Lord should answer in his own time. So at this point, as we begin tonight, I know we are beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I will take this opportunity to introduce you, the pastors to lead us in tonight's program. 
Tonight we have Pastor Nana Kofi Nimako, the Southern Ghana Union Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the one in charge of campus ministry. He is joined by Pastor Kefas Jemfi, the Meridian Ghana Conference Evangelism Director. Then he's also joined by Elder Kusiapia, the district elder of Medina Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. They are here to lead us in prayer. I pray that just as you join them in prayer, just as you are in tune with God, just as you sing with them, the Lord would hear your cry. So stay tuned as they lead us in prayer. Good evening. Good evening. Wherever you're watching us from, we're delighted to be with you this night as we continue with our Bible lecture series, Freedom from Fear. It's always a pleasure to come your way and to lead you to the throne of God. And so for those of us here in the auditorium and every one of us watching us around the world, it may be morning and your place, it may be evening, it may be afternoon, but it's a glorious time where we come before God and we worship him and prayer. And so wherever you are, we want you to join with us this evening as we will want to go to the throne of God and he will surely bless us. This entire period, he's going to bless us in word and in prayer as well. This evening, we have every reason and every cause to glorify and thank and praise God for what he has done for us. He gave us a beautiful day. We have gone on our errands, and here we find ourselves right in front of him. And so those of you in the auditorium and those of you watching us via our social media platforms, we want you to join in in this prayer time. And the Lord will unleash upon us manifold blessings. I'm glad this evening to be doing this with um, Elder Samson, Apia, uh, Apia Kubi, and then Kusi Apia, and then Pastor Kefat Jemfi. Please, you're welcome. Um, we want to start this night by thanking and appreciating God. He's been so good to us. In the next 15 minutes, it is a time of praise, prayer, and worship. And the Lord surely is going to bless every one of us. Now thank we all our God. Yet the ye kumane san yinara ebe yin yamia ye nyamia ye biyama ye nyumre or the yako ye nyuma so and wa sign e de ya ba we ye fi musiumu we ye fi sign wa how any amaniemu. Definitely he is a glorious God. And you mrebe biya wo biara auditorium ha. Any baby a wusha ye fi biara. Messra oni de musa obe so regina wa nine so na ya dan yamia si ye pa because he has been good to us. Now thank we all our God with hands and hearts and voices who want trust things has done in whom this world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is us to you bring me person who shall say, Baby, I will what to share in baby. I what to be a cadument in wherever you're watching and listening us from. I want you to whisper a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord tonight. You can be able to express it more than I will do on behalf of you because you know exactly what God has done for you. Erade near Dinie Erade Ayayatum Erade Shrayen. The Ebedi, the Ebeshe, the Eben Nombebi, the Tibeto, Nyame, and the Abro, Nyame, Ebuni, and Mobo, and a Nyame, Aya Yadum, Mumme, and Bissiano, Nayam Fana, Sam Paye, and Fambre, and Yanko Pong, and you may. Ye Mauso, Ye Shuan Wenyam, Ye Tun Tutin, Ye Bumakas, Radu, and Radio Hoda. 
asa fo yewrade wudin de yehua hwan na ne wo se ye de wase ensa ene be bia ko ye bia wo de ya bedu na se ene wadoma ra kwa o madumadie nso e sha se nyame ye dawase ye ma wo so ye tontom ye hwe wudi kunkuna nu nyame ene ye nya ye edi akoma kro e kase aseda aye ye enkanfo ene tontom enka wo se se ni da wo jesus christ di mu amen amen Lord, we want to thank you for your gracious mercy unto us. Amen. We have gone to and fro the world. There could have been several accidents that we, have, we would have befallen us. But by your grace, we have all arrived here safely. You have given us enough to eat. In spite of the hardships in this world, Lord, you have ministered unto us. Praises and adoration we give to your holy name. We thank you for Jesus' death on Calvary and for his mediation up in heaven for us. We thank you for the opportunity to meet here. Lord, it is by thy grace that this message is designed for us. We adore your name. We praise you for the promise of salvation. Grant us this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. Trust in all lead thee trust in form for full salvation greater and free I am trust in trust in no lead thee I am trusting, trusting, trusting only Thee. Ten days si mu ni raju me di no. Ene ene sha si e na ye pesi ye di ye vire ye ni ra sha o ni anku pon che di ampo mu. Sha so no ni anku pon amahu kwa di ya. And there, Obemaye, a very good weather. Obemaye, Obe Tiwiye Mwamaye. Now, 10 days, we moon yinara. E wye moon sakraye biyara nkebe tumide. Akwen sidiye biyara ba jumede ya kwa yomono. Ono nyame ensi ano emaye. So, ono nyanko pon, eye Joshua nyame no. Ema e wye ni jina e dea. Eni esere nyanko pon se. Oda tia si wa hongwa den. Enu ti omwaye, no maye a very good weather. Wherever you are watching us and praying with us at this moment. We want to pray for a good weather, every every other thing that will be an obstacle and a barrier to the very success of this 10-day campaign. We come against it and we are asking that the Lord will stand firm for us and give us a, a very conducive atmosphere. <laughs> Eye infidia hudu edi juju ma nyina ye bompa ye asro nyankopon se onso no nyina mu ma ye onso de wanu tumu bia ebe ye mpai bo anyame betie na asofo e wo hanso e de enim e de yakɔ nyame ho e wo saa mpai bo no mu we are trusting lord for that asafo rade eya wo ene ye dawo e bi se wo no ma ho kwan ama na dwumade ye e ba so and then you have a real musa cry, I shall so. Amen. Yam be tea, a real mayan. I said, What's a real mayan? The abbey, my assigned a quenchia would draw. I may do my dear Bassa, Jesus, dim pegumayan. Amen. And Fidia would do a dear Juma. Yami, a dinner, I shall win, sir. I bear for ten times so at ye, and the idea, any wound in your dinner, I shall win so. Yami, when I will carry a bemo. We shall eat dinner. No beer no side the workers and Yami. What is it? No, yet there was it. Into your idea, one shall say, Yen we say, O Babua, I may be beer every moody. Yet the Asadiani can be a mom. Yet there was a beam, Jesus Christ, the demon. Amen. Amen. Lord, you are the owner of the entire universe. Every natural law is subject to your uh, authority. Yes. And so, Lord, at this moment, we commit the weather into your hands. Amen. Your message has been prepared. You have sent your son down. And you have invited your children far and near. Lord, we plead that you hold the weather. Amen. And that there should be no distractions as we deliver your message to your people. At the same time, we are also committing the power supply into your care. There has been interruptions, but God will be in the boat. There should be no such disturbance. 
We thank you for this assurance. Lord, keep everything steady. And may your word go to your people and return with fruits a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yebe tuwa suwa bompa ye, asiro nyanko ponse. Oma ya po mudeng, ye nipana odi jumedie nenim. Ye ya, ye pese ye kan jumedie hunde du mounina. Ya rie, musio ni esambiera. Ebe tu mi apa ya kwa emude, onera de enyi fri homa ye. As a for ready, every brain so. Yes, I predict you may be a show and so. Any part and a rich man say, I rear Kayania, Yami, and Kuyi. In the other kind of a casa for you, a show and sa. Yes, so no more so upon my day. Sounds on the day, Yanni, a tear for Nina, so ever when him, Yami, my upon my day. After the assassin, so be on me say, See, I dear whom I was roaming. And we are doing the uncle, we are in the Radaki, a dear whom it was room. That's a who and this room, a free and chain, if you say, and yet Gidia for from what we used to Christ with him. Cosso, no more upon my din, nay a who is also free home, I will yes, Christ with him. Amen. Amen. Lord, when you were on earth, you healed both spiritually and physically. Lord, you have come here to be healed spiritually and also physically. If there is anyone suffering any kind of ailment, Lord, may your word move into such body and rid of it of every infirmity. Amen. Lord, by your word, may the cripple rise. By your word, may the blind see. Amen. By your word, may those internally afflicted be made whole. Amen. As your word goes and delivers salvation, May we see the signs of that salvation in a physically healed body in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Your final prayer in your on the subject of fear. Nyame se wanfa e hum ena odise e muo. Yesro nyanko ponse. Eye e huwa asu viasi imuno. Onam sa ne duju medie iso. Oma ya jini muo e muo do wo hon. Na yen to mint yes any a gidi wa nyamimuno and sipi na and sita yem paya and crank crab bo nea boy free ha edin pai bo jume dieno a baby ye miji de jo Christo so Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray tonight. You have said in your word that you have not created us with the spirit of fear. We thank you for the theme and we thank you for the messages you have prepared for us the entire 10 days. May you, O oh Lord, rise above all our fears and Father, give us victory in the name of Jesus. Strengthen our faith and our hope in you as you do away with the spirit of fear from our lives. Continue to be a blessing unto us, for we have prayed in the loving name of your son, Jesus Christ. Have we prayed with thanksgiving? Amen. Amen. God bless us all. Shall we be seated? We want to thank God so much for another privilege for us to begin with the first major lecture for the Bible lecture series. It is a privilege for me to introduce to you the speaker for tonight, he's going to be assisted by an interpreter in the person of Pastor Felis Edujemfi, the main speaker for tonight and the rest of the night. It's in the person of Pastor Randy Skeet. Before he mounts the pulpit to speak, 
would hear the Freedom Choir sing to us the theme song, Gezi H476. We'll join hands with them as we sing, Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. After the song, you would hear the voice of Pastor Randy Skeet. Stay tuned. And God spake all these words, said, Thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. God is good and all the time. Unyami ye, unyami ye, bring na, unyami ye. I am very grateful to God for the high honor He's given me to be here tonight. Me demi nyanku pono ase wo enkwani ahodi odi ama me ne sabre mi wo ha edi juma. Angels would love to talk about Jesus. And I publicly declare that I am grateful to God. I publicly state that I love God. I publicly confirm that all my blessings have come from God. All my problems I brought on myself. I publicly state that God has never done me anything wrong. How many of you can say the same thing? Can I ask you to raise your hand? God is a good God. Now, how many of you love God? God bless you. God loves to be told from time to time, I love you. Tell him that and put a smile on the face of God. I know you have to be at work tomorrow. I do not want to hold you very long tonight. But I need a little time to get this message across to you. Our message for tonight, one world, one culture. I welcome all of you. And I welcome those of you watching online. Thank God for the capacity we have to have a service in this church and it is seen all over the world. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in. Do three little favors for me. Or for us. But we are one. Preserve reverence. We are in the presence of a holy God. A service on Zoom or Facebook or YouTube does not change the holiness of God. So if you're not using one of these, make sure it's turned off. Favor number two. While I'm speaking, pray, well, while we are speaking, pray for us. All I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in their mouths. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I want God to do that for us tonight. Favor number three. Think. As you listen. Isaiah 1.18 
Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Think of what you're hearing. Ask God to open your eyes. And the Lord will bless you with understanding. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. A name you never refuse. That name is the one who said, let there be light. That name is the one who said, I am the resurrection and the life. That name is the one who said, I and my father are one. That name is the one who said, which of you convinceth me of sin? We come, dear God, in the name of Jesus someone equal with yourself we ask you immediately dear God if we have sinned against you forgive us father we're sorry sin interferes with the understanding of truth forgive us dear God particularly me now fill my brother and me with the spirit of truth put your ideas in our minds your words in our mouths and the humility of Christ in our hearts Father, pour out your spirit on those who are listening, whether in this building or online, wherever they are, bless them. And dear God, for those watching who are not Seventh-day Adventists, reserve your sweetest blessing for them tonight and for all the little boys and little girls who may have tuned in. Father, we're programming from Ghana, Accra, Medina Central SDA Church, Bless the leadership of this country in a very special way, Father. In all the deliberations, remind the leaders, dear God, that righteousness exalteth a nation. And do the same for all the countries represented by those listening. And for anyone with COVID-19, in the name of the merciful Jesus, dear God, Heal those persons, Father, even if they're not believers, because your word says he maketh his son to Work through us, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 3. Roman 14, Let's read verse 10, Romans chapter 3, we'll read 10 to 12, in then Chimu. we'll read 19, in then Chimu. we'll read 23, then we'll go to Galatians. Anyho. Verse 11, there is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Verse 12, they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. This embarrassing Bible passage is telling us that no one descended from Adam naturally does what is good. Let's read verse 19 of Romans chapter 3. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Every mouth stopped. All the world guilty before God. Guilt. Yeah, is the global culture. Sin is a global culture. Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is a global culture. Let us read verse 23 of Romans chapter 3. Romans For all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. The verse makes no exceptions. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let's review those verses. Verse 10. Roman 14, there is none no. righteous. Which means all are unrighteous. There is none that understandeth verse 11. None of us understands spiritual things and unless mubi, God helps us. Listen to how verse 11 ends. There is none that seeketh after God. Every man, every woman who saved was sought by God. No one naturally goes looking for God. And verse 12. There's none that doeth good, no not one. What am I trying to say? You may be Fanti or a Shanti. You may be Zulu or Pedi or Nkosa. You may be Kikuyu from Kenya or Luo or whatever. You may be one of the native tribes in the United States. You may be from the Australian Aborigines. You may be from the Maori of New Zealand. There's one thing that brings us all together as one culture. Sin. Anybody. And it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. How much money you have or don't have. Sin. Our th theme for this uh, 10 days is freedom from fear. Where did fear come from? Before I get into that. Let me pray again. Dear God, I don't want to speak long without seeking more power. And so, and so I ask in the name of Jesus, strengthen your grip on my mind and my brother's mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us go to Genesis chapter 2. Where's the clock? There it is. It's a dangerous thing when a preacher doesn't have a clock. All right, that looks like 7.20. What does that say? 7.20? Okay, I'll release you by 8 o'clock. What book did I say? What chapter? What verse? 25. 25. I read from the King James Version of the Bible. Here's what the Bible says. And they were both naked, the man and his wife. Adam, and in a year, or however I want them. And we're not ashamed. Both naked. No shame. No fear. No embarrassment. Because there was no sin. Now go to chapter 3. Let's read from verse 9. Our subject, one world, one culture. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Why is Adam and Eve, why are Adam and Eve afraid? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. See, 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God said, leave this tree alone. Eat from all of these. Leave one. All the other trees are yours. Reserve one. Leave it alone. You look at verse 16 of Genesis 2. The verse doesn't say, and the Lord God advised the man. It says, the Lord God commanded the man. Adam was given a command. Go to verse 9 again of chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 9. We just read it. We'll read it again. Are you there? If you found it, say amen. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. Listen to God in verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? So do you know can say any Did you do what I told you not to do? We're looking at the foundation of fear. We're looking at the foundation of war, disease, famine. Murder, floods, fires. Did you do what I told you not to do? That was God's question. Let's go to verse 17 of Genesis 3. As we continue with the subject, one world, one culture. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. So, what did you know? I may me share with Sema Enibiano. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And yet, the Dinkano Onipano. Look at Genesis 3, verse 11. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? So, do you know I may share one way to be an Look at verse 17. I fear, I fear, I because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, so, Thou shalt not eat of it. Command, command, command. Now listen to Romans 5, verse 12. Romans 5, verse 12. Romans 14, verse 12. Our subject, one world, one culture. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. And death by sin. Listen carefully. People die. Because of sin. Listen carefully. Sin is the violation of God's commandments. Your problem 
And my problem is sin. I'm about to say some things that will cause you to look at me strangely. So let me pray again. Father, as I say what I'm about to say, particularly in this culture, let your spirit control the minds of those listening, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen to me carefully. There are some cultures that tell you if a woman has no children, she is cursed. So she has to go to the witch doctor. And he may give her something to drink. Or something to rub on her skin. Because according to the culture, if she has no children, she's cursed. Listen carefully to me. That's not the problem that causes anyone to miss heaven. Jesus had no children. He was not cursed. His cousin John the Baptist had no children. He was not cursed. Daniel had no children. He was not cursed. The apostle Paul converted, had no children. He was not cursed. Now, listen for this one. Jeremiah was told by God, don't have children. He was not cursed. Let me tell you quickly, have your children. Have your children. But if you don't, or you can't, you're not cursed. A woman who doesn't have children is not shut out of heaven for that reason. I'll tell you something else again. Jesus was not married. John the Baptist was not married. The converted apostle Paul was not married. Daniel was not married. And God told Jeremiah, do not marry. There. Because not being reason will go to hell. You're not cursed because you're not married. That's not the problem in God's eyes. The problem is not that I have no children. The problem is I keep sinning. The problem is not that I'm not married. The problem is I keep sinning. Jesus, Jesus did not attend the schools of the Pharisees or rabbis. He had no advanced degree. God bless all those with advanced degrees. But if you did not graduate from a university, you're not cursed. Not having a degree is not the reason some people will be lost. You may be poor. Jesus was poor. People don't go to hell because they're poor. People go to hell because they sin. Now, it may be difficult for you to understand what Everywhere you go, there's a prophet that God did not call. And they promise you riches. If you give them money, I am glad this is being recorded. 
I do not want your money. I do not want your money. I do not charge to preach. Why am I saying that? I, I want you to understand, I want this given to God. I want you to give your heart to God. I want you to allow God to remove sin from the heart and to replace it with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. One world. One culture. This world. Our culture. Yeah, 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 mamrepa is sin. Anybody. Not poverty. Now, I am not promoting poverty. Oh no, not at all. I am simply saying. Poverty does not cause anyone to go to hell or heaven. The problem is sin. Yeah, how do you know? Having said that, now, let us say, go back to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. We read from verse 17. Our subject, one world, one culture. Let me pray again. Father, it is risky for me to speak a long time without praying. Please, God, restrain me. Remind me that I am in this pulpit for your glory alone. Please help me, I pray. And my brother, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Genesis 3, let's read from verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For unto dust shalt thou return. Adam and Eve have sinned. Now let's go to verse 22. Of Genesis chapter 3. Listen very carefully. And the Lord God said. Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. God understood that if Adam had eaten of that tree of life in his sinful condition he would have lived forever. Can you imagine a sinner living forever? With all the curses that sin brings someone blind forever someone with an amputation forever in his love the Bible says in verse 23 so therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden to till the ground from which he was taken God put him out of the garden. 
So he would not have access to the tree of life. Because God needed for a sinner to live forever. It says that God placed at the east of the Garden of Eden. Cherubims. Those are mighty angels. Quickly to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22. Let's read verse 14. Before we read that, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation 1. We'll read from verse 1. You have that? Revelation chapter 1. Which God gave ah. unto him. To show unto his servants things which were show. Yes, but according to what we read, who gave that revelation to Jesus Christ? To the world. But what I want to stress is the revelation of Jesus Christ. They argue about the Holy Spirit. He's not a person. He doesn't exist. People seldom argue about God the Father. Now, as you read, remember that do his commandments. That they may have a right to the tree of life. Let's put two and two together. What shut Adam out of the tree of life? Give me one word. This, Adam, come on. What's the word? Disobedience. If that's clear, say amen loudly. Amen. Now, According to Revelation 22, verse 14, what is the condition to get back to that tree? Tell me loudly. Come on. Obedience. Which means our problem is disobedience. What God wants from us is Obedience. Now you tell me, do you need to attend the university to understand that? There's something we're doing that is disobedience to God. And that is the source of our fear. Remove sin. And the fear goes. Because you're nice people. But did you understand what I said? Remove sin. And what goes? Fear. Let me pray again. Father, as I deal with this final segment of the message, really, really speak through me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Here's the problem. Let me review before I tell you the problem. Adam sinned. Adam, your body. Because of that, the earth was cursed. Because he sinned, he could no longer have access to the tree of life. Because he sinned, he became filled with fear. We have learned from Revelation 22 verse 14. Obedience is the condition to get back to that tree. Keep the word obedience in your mind. Do you have that word in your mind? Obedience. 
Say yes or no. Can. Okay. You have obedience right here now. With obedience in your head, listen to Romans 8 verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. If he said, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Neither indeed it cannot obey God. The Bible says the carnal mind the way we are born we cannot obey God. And yet, God requires obedience. So God has a problem, and we have a problem. God's solution is our solution. The solution is Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen for Jesus. Amen. Now, why do I say God's solution is our solution? And God's problem is our problem. God hates sin. Or he hates disobedience. That's a problem he has. He hates it. We like it. Yet he said no. And we keep doing it. Which means we practice suicide. That's our problem. God's solution is our solution. How is that possible? Because God sent Jesus Christ. Someone equal with himself. And someone who became one of us. Through him. You and I. Can obey God. Listen to Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. And I'll close the sermon. Galatians 2 verse 20. The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus came to this earth. Took your condition and mine. He suffered. He was tempted. He gave up his life. He raised himself. And he says to you and to me, he says to us, the life I lived on this earth, I will give to you if you surrender to me 100%. Well, say amen. amen. <laughs> Let me say it again. Jesus says to you and to me, the victorious life I lived in your flesh, I will give you as a gift if you accept me with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, with all your might, with all your strength, with all your understanding, with everything you are, give your life to Jesus Christ. And he will change your life. And sin will cease to have dominion over you and me. One world. One culture. 
But a new world is coming. Can you say amen? In order to prepare for that new world, we need a new culture. If the old culture is sin, disobedience, what should the new culture be? Give me one word. Obedience. How many will say with me tonight, Lord, write your law in my heart? It's the same of saying, write the life of Christ on my heart. So that I can hate sin and love right doing. Can I see your hand? Do you mean that? So Hands down. Let me confirm it. If you will say, Lord, write your law, the life of Christ. On my heart. And you still mean it. Can I see your help? Stand up with me. Sorry, Jinaho. Christ came to change us. We have remarkable examples in the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar was a cruel man. God finally changed him. The Apostle Paul, Paul had Christians so. killed. Paul and so, so. God changed him. Matthew. He wrote the first gospel. He was a tax collector. They were virtually all thieves. Christ changed him. Mary, the, uh, the prostitute. Mary, Magdalene. She met Christ. Christ changed him. He can change you. Yes, you beat me as a sound. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Oh my, okay. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you, dear God, for the power of Christ to change our present culture into the culture that equips us for a place in your coming world. And that new world, the lifestyle is obedience. Father in heaven, You've heard the words from my brother and from me. We made a weak attempt to produce tremendous truth. We ask you in the name of Jesus, dear God, let your spirit take this message and reapply it to the mind of everyone who listened. Help us to understand, dear God, that our problem as regards to salvation is sin. And the only solution is a total surrender to Jesus Christ. Help us to understand that Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden, kept away from the tree of life because of sin or disobedience. And your word makes it clear the condition to return to that tree is obedience. In the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, bless everyone who listened. Take conviction, dear God, to everyone's heart and mind. In a special way, bless our guests who are not Adventists. Move upon their hearts to come back tomorrow, Father, or to rejoin us wherever they are listening to this program. We thank you for Jesus. As much as sin is a problem, dear God, your grace is greater. We thank you for that. Now, dear God, as we leave, take us safely home. Let the angels that take us home stay with us. Watch over us tonight. Bring us back tomorrow to hear your word again. Bless this country and all countries listening, I pray. In Jesus' name, let all God's people say, Amen, amen. and Amen.
Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I am sure that you've not forgotten that God's problem is our problem and God's solution is our solution. Tomorrow, same time, you would join us live on Hope TV at exactly 6.30 p.m. But we'll be present and seated here at exactly 6 o'clock p.m. So join us tomorrow. There are numbers on your screens. If you have questions, if you have prayer requests, you can call those numbers. You can test those numbers. You can send WhatsApp messages and they will respond. The numbers are 020 0057 012 or 055 Please send a WhatsApp or text message to 055-9065. God bless you and keep watching Hope Channel, your preferred Christian channel.